Hey, it's Gail from Bernina of Naperville, and today I have a tale of two buttonholes. We've got manual buttonhole and automatic buttonhole, and you're going to learn how to use both of them today. Yes, yes, you are going to make a buttonhole. Let's get started. Before I get started with the automatic buttonholes and, and so forth, I just wanted to show a little reminder of when you're making buttonholes, normally it's for a garment or something like that, you need to have some kind of stabilizer in there. Stabilizer, I think of something as more of a um, removable item. So in the garment world, we call that interfacing where it's meant to stay in the garment. So this is Sure Tailor interfacing. This is a Pellon, uh product and this is the kind I would use in a woven like in a button-up shirt a dress I even use this in waistbands sometimes it's fusible on one side it's kind of soft I've used it in some crafting projects too so I used that in this example and some of these other examples that I'm going to show you and you can see here it's folded in to this sample kind of like it would be on a placket or a lapel now, you also are going to need to um, stabilize or interface a knit. Um, there are many, you know, there aren't many button up knit pieces, but there are some out there. And if you wanted to make a buttonhole on a knit, you can't just make it on the knit without some sort of stabilizer. So, what I have in this knit is this product called Armo Weft. And I love Armo Weft because it's really supple, like the knit, but it gives it enough stability so we're not going to really have tunneling and things like that. This is also a fusible product. And then you can see here, I have that in this example. So I'm gonna make some buttonholes on our Bernina 335. And we're gonna start with a simple manual buttonhole. Then we're gonna do an automatic buttonhole with the number three A foot. And then I'm gonna show you how to put a buttonhole into long-term memory. So if you have something and you need to make the same buttonhole again and again and again over a long period of time, you can do that. So the first thing that I'm gonna to need to do is thread up my machine and grab my buttonhole foot. So the Bernina 335 comes with a snap-on version of this foot, but I'm gonna be using the full shank version today, and this is the manual buttonhole foot. Now, sometimes you might wanna make a manual buttonhole if you're making something super long, because the automatic buttonhole foot that you see here can only make it about 30 millimeters long like that. So if you had, for some reason, you had to make some super long buttonhole, you might wanna go the manual route. Uh, some people just feel more comfortable making them manually. And then maybe sometimes you might have some weird challenging fabric that the automatic buttonhole foot is just not handling well, but stay tuned because I have another solution for that issue. But let's start by putting our buttonhole foot on the manual on so you can look and see how it's notched out to go over those beads of the buttonhole. And now I'm just gonna thread this up. Now, I, on purpose, have threaded this machine with green thread on the top and purple thread on the bottom. Now, with the bobbin thread, and this is only on the machines with the CB hook. CB hook machines are like these bobbins that have this little finger on the top, and this little finger on the top has a hole. Well, we're gonna thread that little hole. See that, how I have that threaded? You're gonna do that too. Now, this tutorial works for the 325, the 335, and some of you out there that have Bernina Virtuosa 150 era machines and even the Auroras and, and some others. So, so keep that in mind as you watch this video. So I'm gonna put my bobbin back in now that that little finger is threaded. And of course, when we work with a manual buttonhole foot, we need to actually draw our markings of our buttonhole exactly on our fabric. So now I'm just using a scrap here to show you, but what you would do is you would draw like the little top part there, and then however long you wanna make your buttonhole. So let's just say I wanna make mine like this. And this is a heat vanishing pen. I really like these, they work really well. And uh, once you give this a little pressing with the iron, this goes away. 
So I've selected the number 10 buttonhole. That's just kind of the standard buttonhole on this machine. So all I've done is just selected this. It's gonna set the width and the length perfectly for me. You can see that I've selected number 10 because it shows up there. I've got my number three foot on and now, hey, let's go for this. This is your magic button. This is the quick reverse button, and this is the button that you're going to need to communicate to your machine when you want to do something with the buttonhole. So just keep this in mind that when I say I'm pressing the quick reverse button, I'm pressing this button right here, right above the needle. Now that I've lined up everything, you know I'm pressing the button. What button am I pressing? That's right, the quick reverse button. But I haven't pressed anything yet. I'm just going to simply let the machine make this bead right down the center where I made this mark. Okay, now I'm stopping and I'm pushing the quick reverse button. And now to make the best buttonhole, it goes backwards so that this next bead will go in the same direction as the first bead. So now I'm pressing the button, reverse button again. And now it's gonna do the top and now come back down and do this bead. And now I'm at the end. I press the button hole stoppy button again. And now this time it's gonna make my bar tack stop and be done. So I can lift up my presser foot and admire my buttonhole. Now, remember, we put purple thread in this buttonhole bobbin. So let's cut and look underneath. So you can see there's my purple thread, but threading that little, um, finger really wraps that top thread around to give you perfect beads on your buttonhole. So that's a manual buttonhole. Now some of you out there in the universe will have an automatic buttonhole foot. That comes with the Bernina 335 standard and some of the other models as well. And that's as we go up the line here and do some more demonstrations, this is going to be our preferred buttonhole that we want to use. If you're sewing on a 215 or a machine that does not have the magic eyeball under here to do the automatic buttonhole capabilities, there is a 3B button. Now, the benefit of this one is we don't have to mark our fabric to make our buttonhole. We can just say, hey world, we want to make a like 14 millimeter buttonhole and then we sew, 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 sew until that red dot lines up with the red point. We push our buttons and we do our thing. So let's make a buttonhole with this just so that you can see how you would use this buttonhole because there are a lot of you out there that have a Bernina 215 and other machines like that. Now, you'll also notice that on this foot, there's not like a little notch to get the thread under there. So I'm gonna just take my buttonhole foot and put my needle down through the foot and pull my little tail underneath so that my thread gets nicely tucked under the foot like that. I am still on my number 10 buttonhole, standard buttonhole, and I'm fine with that. And I'm just gonna make this next to the buttonhole that we just made. Now, let's determine how long do we want this buttonhole? Well, sometimes when you buy buttons, it'll tell you on the back of the card the size of the buttonhole in millimeters. So let's just say we're gonna go for a 17 millimeter buttonhole. Why not, right? So we're gonna lower our presser foot. Don't forget, if we were doing this for real, we'd draw our buttonhole possibly, or at least we'd make a little X or a line or a cross where we want to start the buttonhole. That's just to practice so that you can make sure that you can get good at repetitive action here. All right, so I'm starting here, right at that little cross. I'm gonna hold my tails a little bit, and now I'm gonna stitch, stitch, stitch.
Now I'm gonna stop when that little red dot gets to my red arrow. Okay, it's there. What button am I pressing? That's right, the quick reverse button. And now my machine's gonna go backwards. And now I'm right back at zero. I press the quick reverse button again. Now I'm gonna go forwards. When the little dot gets to the red arrow again, I'm gonna stop. And now I press the quick reverse button again, and it's gonna bar tack and finish up my buttonhole. And then I can lift, cut, and admire my buttonhole. Pretty good, huh? So that makes buttonholes a little bit easier with this number 3B foot. Let's have a look at the automatic buttonhole foot. So the automatic buttonhole foot has an eyeball on it and there's an eyeball under the machine that communicates with this foot. Now, if you see how I'm moving this, do you see how there's kind of like a little fan in there? That's how the machine knows what part of your buttonhole you're in. It's, it's like super smart that way. So we're gonna put this on in the same way that we put that little buttonhole foot with the slide on. And now I've got, I've got it made now with this. So I don't have to press this button as much this time, but I'm gonna just stick with the same buttonhole here. And this time, all I'm gonna do is just put a little buttonhole over here. And now the only thing that I, that I need to do in this case is I could draw my buttonhole in the length that I want it, just like you saw me do in the manual, or I can do the same thing that I just did with that manual buttonhole foot with the slider and decide, hey, this time I'm making a 20 millimeter buttonhole. So I've slid that little red piece down to the 20 millimeter mark on the foot because it's like a little ruler on the side. Now I'm gonna line this up right in that spot there, lower my presser foot. There we go. And now I want to make a 20 millimeter buttonhole and now it's going to do it automatically. So all we have to do is press that quick reverse button one time. Now I'm ready. Now, another thing that's happening after I press that button is my screen is flashing auto. Okay, see that screen flashing auto? That means that our sewing machine is recognizing that foot. So now all I'm gonna do is stitch. And now the machine will do everything automatically for me. And you know what the best part is? After I lift this presser foot and cut, I can make another one exactly this size. You, you don't believe me? Let's do it again, ready? All right, I'm gonna do my best to try to line this up right next to it. It's lower. Okay. I'm doing it again, here we go. Oh, I started up a little too high. But look, Ma, no hands. I don't have to touch anything this time. Okay, let's lift and look. All right, so even though, you know, I didn't start it quite even, these are exactly the same size. So I should have just marked it so that you could see, but nonetheless, I think you get the drift. If you were really happy with this buttonhole, and you wanted to make a ton of these, you can sit here all day without turning your machine off and on and make these buttonholes all this size. But sometimes we have to leave for the day or we have to do something else in our life. So that requires us to actually save a buttonhole. 
So what we can do is once you've made the buttonhole, it, you know, the style buttonhole that you would like, you are going to press this memory enter button. You just press that. And now when I turn my machine off, I've gone away, I've gone to bed, I've gone to work, I've whatever, okay? Now it's the next day, I'm ready to make my buttonhole. I can turn my machine on, select that buttonhole, like the style that I was making the night before, and go into my memory. This time it's the memory power button, the one in the center there. And now it's remembered my buttonhole and I can make it again. Why not? I have a little bit of room to make this other one here that we just saved into memory forever. Here we go. So it remembered. So that's called long-term buttonhole memory. All right, we're gonna hop on over to another style Bernina. So we were just working on the 335 and we were working primarily with this style buttonhole, number 51. But there's a lot of other buttonholes available. Let me just slide this out. This is a Bernina 570. And uh, you can see here, there are kind of like a buttonhole for different types of occasions. So 51 is like the standard one. 52 is a skinnier one for thinner, more delicate material. 53 is a knit. We're gonna make one of those. And then we have various oval and keyhole buttonholes and everything. There's a handout that coincides with this tutorial. So you might want to just check that out. It's in the description of this YouTube video, but we also have it under our handout section at BerninaofNaperville.com. Right on the homepage, you can scroll down. You can see the mastery books and also in there, there's, there's all kinds of other supplemental things that we put together. But, um, but we're going to go take a little tour of some of these. So the first one that I want to make while I'm here is just to show you kind of like how you're going to make a buttonhole automatically on a machine that has the touch screen like this. And we're going to use our automatic buttonhole foot that you saw me use just a moment ago. So I'm going to use my automatic buttonhole foot number 3A. You can see its little magic eyeball right there. And I'm going to put this on the machine. And I'm putting this on just like I put the foot on the 3 Series. Now, what I want to do is kind of show you how you're going to do an automatic buttonhole on this machine. So I'm going to hit the little I button, and then there are multiple different ways that we can do this. If we wanted to do a manual buttonhole, see how I scroll down and man is right there? Well, the manual buttonhole is basically just going to let me do the steps like we did on the 3 Series. Another way that I could do it is I could record my stitches like you saw the automatic buttonholes on the um, 3 Series, it's very similar. But my preferred method in this case is to touch this 16 millimeter and the buttonhole. That allows me to take a button, put it up on the screen, use my multi-function knobs to increase the size and really adjust for the size of the button that I have that I need to make a buttonhole for. Then once you've done that, you can go ahead and X out of it and then make your buttonhole. I'm gonna make a buttonhole on this and you can see here this red line is a basting line. And if I were to make a garment and make a blouse or a coat or something, there is a great debate between do we do the buttonholes going horizontally or do we do them vertically? Now, on the handout to this class, I've posted a link to the American Sewing Guild website where they have a great article about this. But in a nutshell, we do buttonholes that go this way or horizontally when it's an outer garment or when the buttons 
holes are going to take a lot of stress. So that's why you'll see the waistband of jeans. The buttonholes go horizontally and also at the neck of a button-up shirt they go horizontally but the rest of the blouse or the shirt might go vertically. Um, you wouldn't really see a coat with vertical buttons but you know at the end of the day it is a personal preference. So I'm going to show you how to do the buttonholes both ways. Normally, with garments, five-eighths of an inch is the ruling seam allowance. And so normally on a shirt, if you're going to make vertically positioned buttons, you're going to do a basting line five-eighths of an inch from the fold. That's what we've done here. This line doesn't stay. This is just going to be pulled out after we make our buttonholes. So then I'm going to line up my little dot and I'm using my freehand system to lower my presser foot here and I'm starting right on that T. Now in my example, I am making a 22 millimeter buttonhole, but the 22 millimeter, it also, the, the machines with the touchscreen are going to add a little bit extra millimeters for the thickness of the button. So let's just go ahead and give this little baby a run. Now, oh wait, I haven't had to do anything special to the bobbin in this machine because everything is automated. So we don't need to worry about threading a bobbin finger for this. All right, we made it, guys. Let's have a look at our buttonhole. Look at that. And I was able to use my thread cutter, which was really pretty cool. So one thing I want to show you is what I love about some of these machines, and this would be the 480 and up through the series, is imagine trying to cut that buttonhole. Those little beads are really close together. Well, on the 480 and up, I can even adjust how far apart those beads are. So let's make our second one with that adjustment. It's going to start here with my little I button, and it's this button right here. And as I turn my knob, I can make it a little bit further apart. So I'm going to do one millimeter. Now another thing that's happened when I did that is it kind of makes my beads a little skinnier. So if I want them to be a little bit wider, I can just now close out of that and use my top adjustment or my stitch width adjuster to make the beads of my buttonhole just a little bit wider. So now that I've made that adjustment, let's go back down and stitch this buttonhole. Okay, I'm lining up my design again, or my design, my buttonhole. I guess a buttonhole is a design. All right, I'm getting that right on the spot that I need, and now I'm stitching. So now you can see just a subtle difference there in our cutting width. So that's pretty cool. And then that's my sample lapel. All right, let's look at some other buttonholes. I think it would be fun to show you how to make a buttonhole for a knit. So let's have a look at this one. This is the knit buttonhole. This is, this is number 53. And you know what, I've got some smaller buttons that I'm gonna use on this example. So let's go ahead and just make a slightly smaller buttonhole, whatever. Make it 15 millimeters, it's adding the little thickness, see? So it's 15 millimeter button, but the buttonhole itself is gonna be 17 millimeters. So now that I'm all set with that, I'm gonna make it on my knit. All right, so now I'm gonna just line this up here. I'm gonna do these the vertical way, lower my presser foot, get it on there. I did slow the speed of my machine down just a little bit, because I like to go a little bit slower on knits. But now, let's see how this little baby's gonna look. 
Now when it makes the beads this time, it's making more of an overlock looking type of stitch. And this really is to give the buttonhole a little bit of flexibility because it is a stretchy material after all. All right, there we go. We're going to cut. And now let's have a look at this. That's a very good looking buttonhole. I like it. I made a couple. <laughs> All right, so that's how that would work. I've gone back to our buttonhole foot number 51, and as you can see, it remembered my changes even though I've made some other buttonholes. And this time, I'm going to make the same buttonhole, but let's pretend that this is on a hand woven of some sort or some kind of material that is just more loosely woven and where the buttonholes tend to stretch out through time. So I'm using buttonhole twist here. This is a Mettler Cordonnay 12 weight kind of cording thread. And I'm going to take a little bit of this thread and I'm going to make a corded buttonhole. And our automatic buttonhole foot holds this perfectly. Okay, I folded my cording in half and I am taking a loop of my cording and putting it behind my foot right here, then bringing it to the front. You know, you have to be a little bit fancy here because I'm also trying to get my thread out from under my needle here. I'm gonna put this under here. Okay, so now that's stuck in the back there, and now I'm gonna bring my cording to this side of that little contraption and this side in there. All right, so now I'm just lining this up like I have been on my other pieces, and I'm gonna start right on this line. Now, I wanna to talk to you a little bit. So I told you that there's the debate of horizontal versus vertical. Well, I'm making this a horizontal buttonhole. And if you notice, it's hard to maybe tell here, but this is, my basting stitch here has been stitched a half an inch from the edge rather than five eighths on this one. And that's because we want our bead or our bar tack, whatever, to start at half an inch so that the button in the buttonhole sits at around that five eighths of an inch mark. So when I make my buttonholes in the horizontal fashion, I am actually going to be stitching my basting placement line at half an inch from the edge. So now I'm starting this. Now, as you can see, as I make this buttonhole, the bead the bead is being formed right on top of that cording. Now, of course, I can speed this up a little bit, but I wanted you to see how that's happening. And now on the other side, it's gonna do the same thing. And then you're gonna cut, lift the foot, pull the foot off, and undo the cording from the foot. So that means we're gonna take the cording out here and here. And then on the back there, we unhooked it from that. So now we have our nice corded buttonhole and you would pull your cording just like this. And then what I like to do is take a darning needle and feed this through to the other side. So I would just thread this darning needle like so, tuck it under here, pull back to the other side like this, and then you can tie it off 
And sometimes I like to tie it in a way that we can undo it again because this is a great way to preserve the, the integrity of your buttonholes, especially on that loosey-goosey stuff. So you could tie your cording like that and then trim it. And then what happens is if it starts to stretch out or whatever, you have a little bit of tail so that you can pull it and tighten it up so it's not stretching out. Now you also might be curious about if I if you can do corded buttonholes for manual buttonhole feet and absolutely that's why there's a middle toe on your manual buttonhole feet. So you would fold up your cording, loop it over your toe, and it would ride just like this on your buttonhole as you make that. Let's play around with another buttonhole. Let's try something deep down on here. Let's try buttonhole foot number 69. This is one with a little triangle at the bottom and a triangle at the beginning. This would be for definitely woolly items, maybe some denim, things like that. Really sturdy, rugged buttonhole. And let's tell it how big we want it to be. Let's just go for Let's go for a larger buttonhole. I'm gonna do like 18 millimeters. So that's gonna be 18 millimeters for the button, but 20 millimeters to add for the thickness of the button. Okay, I'm lining up my buttonhole here, lowering my foot. There we go. And now let's give it a go. Look, that is really cool. I can't wait to try this. I've got like a little Western style blouse that I'm making and I wanna try making a buttonhole like this. Looks good on both sides too. Now maybe you have something a little prissy or just, you know, like a little uh, very sheer delicate piece. That's why there are buttonholes like this one. And this one is literally like a little buttonhole stitch for applique that you might see. So let's stitch out this little heirloomy one. Lowering the presser foot. I just am going to pick a We're going to make this one a little bit smaller. I'm doing this one at 15 millimeters. Super cute. Look at that. I love it. I, you know, I'm really inspired to make something with all of these fun buttonholes now, I have to say. All right, so finally, I want you to see a keyhole buttonhole. And I'm doing the keyhole buttonhole number 58. And this one is going to stitch out in a little different way. Keyhole buttonholes are actually designed to go around a button with a wide shank. So you might see something like this on jeans or heavy jackets, jeans jackets, things like that. So see how it's making the straight line first. Then it's gonna come down here and do its eyelid. Then it goes back. And now it's gonna go backwards with the stitching, but it, see how it's making the satin stitching all in the same direction? That's how you wanna do it because that way then each bead of the buttonhole gives you kind of the same pile when you look at the stitch. But there we go, keyhole buttonhole. 
All right, now that we've made this, it's time to cut them. Let's take a moment to talk about the things that you can use to cut a buttonhole. So the first thing that I'm gonna do is just cut this regular buttonhole with my old fashioned technique. My old fashioned technique requires putting a pin in the beginning and the end of the buttonhole, just like this. And then using the seam ripper, you can see I use my favorite one, which is my Bernina seam ripper that came with my machine. And I'm just gonna insert my seam ripper in and cut. And making sure that you're not cutting the beads of the buttonhole. And then we put this guy in there so I can't cut my bar tack just like that. So now I take that guy out and now we have a cut buttonhole. Now, that might not be your favorite. So I have this really cool Nifty Notions buttonhole cutter. The Nifty Notions buttonhole cutter also comes with its own little um, eyelet. So it comes together as a set with the apple core and the chisel. But I do like this one from OESD a little bit better because it comes with this set of adjustable tips. And sometimes if you have a smaller buttonhole, you might actually just hang the buttonhole off the side of this little wood block cutter. But in this case, we're actually gonna cut the buttonhole with the chisel and it's wider than our chisel. So it's gonna feed that down in there and cut and feed that down in there and cut. And you can see that also does a very good job. So then um, something like this that's really delicate, I probably would steer to the seam ripper because I feel like I have a little bit more control over cutting this, but just very gently. And if you really want to cut small bits at a time, you can bring your seam ripper up out of the fabric. Just like that and cut in little increments to be very careful not to cut that thread. See, just little bits across that buttonhole. Okay, now let's look at this one. So we could be very boring and just cut this buttonhole down like this. But I've got this cool tool from OESD that has this cool little tip. And there are all kinds of tips in this. And I'm gonna pick the smallest one. That's gonna be the 1.5 millimeter. That's really tiny there. Double check that. Actually, I think I can go to a two millimeter one or maybe two and a half millimeter. Let's check that out. Oh, perfect. So I'm gonna to change to this two and a half millimeter and put this into place. There we go, just like this. So the first thing I'm gonna do is, after I do that, is I'm just gonna cut my little hole here. <laughs> and then I'm going to cut with the chisel. And there we go. All right, there might be a time when you have like a really bulky thing that you need to make a buttonhole on and you want this fabric feeding aid. So the way that this works is we slip the back of the foot, this um, automatic buttonhole foot, through this little notch right there. Then we slide our automatic button foot in just like this. Okay, then there's a bottom piece and you feed that little guy through that piece like so. Then we put our buttonhole foot on the machine 
And now what I can do is lift up my foot and put my thick material through here that's gonna keep everything nice and stable. I would have a marking, I'd line it up, all of that good stuff, and then lower my presser foot again. Then I would pick my buttonhole and then I would stitch. So let's go ahead and just, I'm stitching a 22 millimeter buttonhole and it's number 51. Pretty fancy, huh? Look at that. That did like a great job. All through those layers on that uneven surface, perfect. Now, wasn't that easy? It didn't hurt at all. Well, maybe if you accidentally slipped and cut yourself with that chisel, that thing looked sharp. <laughs> anyway, I hope that you enjoy this and I hope you certainly use some of the tips and tricks that you've done today to make your um, own garments with buttonholes or Hey, and don't forget that you can use a buttonhole to make the little grommet holes for your shower curtain. Um, you could also use really long ones to, you know, even weave through a dowel for a curtain. So it's more than just making garments for the buttonholes. And don't forget, hey, pillows, all kinds of stuff. Well, if you want to see more videos just like this one, don't forget to check out the Bernina of Naperville YouTube channel. It's pretty easy. It's youtube.com slash Bernina of Naperville. And there you can like, comment and subscribe. And oh, one more favor. If you like our content, please share it out on your social channels because maybe your friends would like to see it too. But anyway, we'll be back again with some more tips. But in the meantime, dust off that automatic buttonhole foot. Bye.